Hello, how are we all? This isn't the vlog part of this video yet, it is currently 8.10pm on Friday the 19th of May, which is the day that I'm releasing this video. And I wasn't going to do a video today, I'll be honest, I was literally just in bed at 6pm <laughs> with a glass of wine <laughs> watching Crazy Ex-Girlfriend and I just was like, you know what I want to do right now? I want to organise my video files on my hard drive. So I started doing that, but I feel like something quite serendipitous happened, which is that I then realised that months ago I started editing together um, vlogs that I had taken from the kind of moment that I decided that I wanted to seek an ADHD diagnosis through to just before I got my assessment. And I thought, funny isn't it that I've stumbled across this? Because this week there's been a lot of uh, kerfuffle, to put it in a rather British manner. Um, a lot of shit basically this week because of a BBC Panorama documentary that was released exposing three private ADHD clinics for misdiagnosing ADHD. I'm not going to talk in massive detail about that to be honest, I haven't watched the programme, I have been looking at some of the statements that various ADHD communities and neurodiversity charities have put out because I, you know, I do think it's important to have a balanced view on these things but also to protect. As somebody that is part of that community sometimes you just need to protect your peace and not feel like you're constantly justifying something that you know to be true about yourself. But something that's come off the back of that is a kind of concern for the ADHD community and the people that are go are have been diagnosed or go undiagnosed and are seeking assessments from private practice because without a true representation of the context of why people seek private diagnosis over NHS there's a fear that it's kind of undermined the validity of the private diagnosis or you know created a situation where people are questioning their diagnosis if they went private or feel like it's not a good option for them so I thought you know what I'm going to release this video today because I got a private diagnosis I got it online it was a comprehensive and I fully believe and trust that diagnosis and I didn't even consider getting an NHS diagnosis because I was in a fortunate and privileged position to be able to pay private and I knew that on the NHS it would take like I think it's two to five years depending on where you are in the UK so I didn't even cross my mind. So in the series of vlogs that you're about to watch this is from me September last year and it will give you a flavour of why I decided to get an ADHD assessment and how I made the decision to go private and I hope it just gives you a sense of validation if you're worried about your own diagnosis or if you think you might have ADHD that like this isn't a decision that we take lightly um, and to be honest I don't even want to really entertain those people that will look for any reason to validate their idea that getting an ADHD diagnosis is easy or like some kind of trend or fact because honestly it's really not worth entertaining and I'm hoping from this video those of you that need it will feel a sense of reassurance about how this isn't a decision that we take lightly um, it's life-changing, it's identity-altering, and um, I'm right there with you. I'll also link to some other videos um, at the end, or you can find them on my channel, because I've talked about how I felt in the aftermath of getting diagnosed. I've got vlog videos around my medication journey. I just did a recent update on my medication journey, so feel free to check those out. And if Should I be surprised that after recording that video for you, I have no idea where I put my wine? Did I bring it up with me? That seems like an odd thing to do. I did. I certainly did. Cheers. Hello. Um, so I guess I'm counting this as like day one of my road to ADHD diagnosis journey. Um, I, oh, I feel weird. I feel weird. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess some context. I um, a month or so ago, somebody close to me got diagnosed with ADHD in their thirties, and um, it's something that I'd never really considered for myself. I don't know, like I did a psychology degree, I learned about it, it was it was young hyperactive boys in class causing disruption um, and I never even considered it as a possibility at all for myself but going through this process with this person that I know that got diagnosed and kind of looking in, into it a bit more was suddenly like, oh my god, like this kind of makes my life fall into place in so many ways. Didn't I felt like I was jumping on a bit of a bandwagon, I felt like I was just jumping on this trend of noise about ADHD and how people can't concentrate and focus and it's probably just like anxiety and it's probably just the modern world and scrolling on TikTok and doing all of these things and so I was just like stop being dramatic about it put it to the back of your mind <laughs> but as is the case with me with things that are in my mind that I try to put it to the back of my mind um it just kept like surfacing whenever I wasn't busy so if I wasn't at work I wasn't socializing I wasn't with people I just keep ruminating and ruminating and ruminating it and going down a YouTube wormhole and watching all of these videos about it and I just couldn't like pull myself away from it 
and I'd drawn a line under it, but then I went on holiday for a week this past week, and I just spent the, the whole week unraveling because I couldn't get this thing out of my head that was like, I think I have ADHD. Am I unraveling like that? <laughs> Shouldn't come as a surprise to me because this is what I do. Um, I find it extremely difficult to exist in the in-between. So if there's an element of uns... I think uncertainty is the word, but like, if there's... If there's something that is about to happen, if I've made a decision about something that I want to happen, or if something's about to happen, like I'm about to start a new job, or I'll look for a new job, or move house, or want to get an ADHD assessment, if the thing that, I, that is going to happen isn't happening right now, I find it excruciating to exist in the period until it does happen, and I just think about it constantly. And this is what's happened over the last week, I've thought about it constantly. I was out of my routine, I didn't have like familiar things that I would normally do to help me when I ruminate, and I just it got completely out of control. So I had, um, I'm fortunate enough to get like uh, private medical care with my work, so I spoke to a doctor yesterday um, about it, looking to get a referral, and I did get a referral, so that was, that was positive. Um, I didn't really feel as relieved as I thought I would, I think because it's still not where I want to be, which is just fucking knowing if I've got it or not. My pri I'm pretty confident my private healthcare doesn't cover it. Um, it says that um, my care does not cover... My brain just fell out my ass. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, thoughts, thinking, thinking, thoughts. The benefit of this is that you get like the raw, unedited version of me. Um, but also at a point where like I'm just not really with it, so it's even more raw, one might say. I think because I was just listening to the cranberries in the shower, and all, <laughs> all I want to say is, you got to let it linger. Maybe that's a bit of a metaphor for my current state. Right, I'm talking about um, private diagnosis. Oh yeah, so in my like manual for my private healthcare, it says that they do not cover treatment for learning or behavioural disorders such as dyslexia and ADHD, and they only cover assessment if you've been referred um, as part of a mental health issue that the doctor is trying to rule out if you um, have it ADHD as part of a mental health issue. So, I mean, it, this is significantly impacting my mental health, but like, not really at a point where I'm at like a diagnosable depression and anxiety situation. So anyway, um, who knows what we're talking about? I feel like this looks like I'm putting it on now to try and prove that I've got some kind of symptoms for this issue. <laughs> Generally where my head is at. So yes, I am going to call my healthcare provider on Monday morning, as soon as they open, because I can't wait any longer, to um, basically say, I've got this referral letter, do you cover it or not? If they don't cover it, I'm just gonna pay for it myself. I'm in a really fortunate position that I can do that. I'm panicking slightly because the initial assessment, although it's a cost, it's more the, it's more the like months afterwards, like the recurring monthly cost afterwards of if I get diagnosed of psychiatrist visits and if I choose to medicate medication so I'm kind of panicking about that but fundamentally I'm like I'm in a good position to be able to just pay for it if, if it's taking too long otherwise or my healthcare doesn't cover it so just fucking do it because I, I'm gonna go out of my mind um, and I guess just some initial thoughts it which is part, part of the reason why I've been so emotional I think over the last um, week is because even though I haven't even been diagnosed yet, I feel like I'm going through them. <laughs> I feel like I'm processing the emotions as if I are, as if as if I have. Um, and I'll be honest, maybe it feels risky and like embarrassing to say this, but like I'll be really surprised if I'm not diagnosed. I've currently got like a nine A4 page list of all of the examples of how I meet the criteria. I feel like I'm almost, even though I don't have a diagnosis, I feel like I'm processing the emotions as if I have been diagnosed, which is weird. But I'm trying not to beat myself up about it because, again, I can't stop myself. It's not like you can just say, well, just don't think about it that way. It's just what my head does. And actually, when I'm back at work tomorrow, I'll be much better. It, I ha it's because I've had an endless abyss of time um, to think without any structure and routine, whereas I'll be able to, like, distract myself in a positive way, really, when I go back to back to work. And, and a positive on that, 
that I've only just realising as I'm saying this right now is that because I spend so much time agonising on the moments in between where I am and the change that's about to happen, by the time the change happens, I've pretty much come to terms with it. <laughs> pretty much ready to rumble. So I'm dealing with it now. But just something in my head that, that I'm really kind of um, feeling really weird about in a, in a like validating but also infuriating way is reading about it and watching, so I've been watching How To ADHD YouTube channel, amazing. Um, and I have this really weird sense that it's almost like I've spent my whole life, until the age of 30, trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle, agonising over trying to like solve this jigsaw puzzle and build this coherent picture. And it's like I'm finding out now that I didn't even have the pieces to begin with. <laughs> and, and it's like, relieving, but also the place I'm at right now is just like really fucking infuriating, to be honest. Um, and there's no blame it there or anything like that. Like, I think I've had to go through this process. There would, there's not really a point in my life, I think, where it ever would have seemed like a possibility. Um, you know, it's not a failure of anybody in my life or, any, or this education system or anything like that, because it wasn't, there was nothing, Let's see, I'm talking about it like I've been diagnosed, but yeah, it's weird. Okay, update, update, update since my video this morning. Uh, it's now about 20 past one. Um, I'm really tired, but I've actually had a, had a really good day so far. Like I um, didn't, didn't like give myself any rules about what I was gonna do today. I ended up just like voice noting and talking to my sister loads about everything that's on my mind and just having some generally fun, lovely time together. Um, watch some YouTube videos, some entertainment, some ADHD related. Um, I then basically put like a table together on um, a document with all of the like symptom checklist and then started to like do my ratings and put some examples, all the kind of stuff that I just like, is not necessary, but I just feel makes me feel kind of better um and yeah i'm feeling a lot better than i was this morning but i'm feeling really tired again probably from all of the thinking i've also got an eye twitch it's so funny i honestly think that <laughs> the amount of thinking that i've done over the last week and like overthinking and ruminating in my brain has, give, has like physically given me a headache and it's and my left eye started twitching so i think i'm gonna go take a nap um I should go for a walk because that will make me feel better. But I don't want to! <laughs> Hello! Updates. This is the day after my last video vlog, shall we say. As you can tell, I'm feeling much better uh, for two reasons. I spoke to my... Um, whoa, sorry. I've just been for a swim and I actually haven't eaten very much today. <laughs> today I feel a bit woo in the head. Um, I spoke to my private healthcare provider this morning. Long story short, no, it's gonna be a long story. ADHD assessment is not covered by them unless it's related to a mental health condition. And given that part of what I struggle with is anxiety and depression related symptoms of premenstrual syndrome, and I told them that, they referred me, th they put me through to the mental health team to discuss my referral options. Um, and they were, they were immensely helpful they talked me through it all. They gave me a list of 10 psychiatrists that are approved by them in their local, in my local area and said, I need to go away, choose one, book a first consultation, which my private healthcare will cover. And then what will happen off the back of that consultation is they will um, decide whether I need to have an actual ADHD assessment, send my, health, send my insurance a report saying that, and the fees, then they make a decision about whether they're covering it or not, and then I can book an ADHD assessment. So at first I was like, oh my god, I'm winning at life, I've managed to get it included in my healthcare. But then when I, he told me all of that, I was a bit like, oh. Because the other factor is they only cover it if it's related to your, a mental, significant mental health problem. And the crux of the issue is right now, it, it isn't, I mean like, my PMS is under control because I take antidepressants for it two weeks out of every month. Yes, my he mental health suffers because of 
things that I'm struggling with, which I think are ADHD related, but not enough to be anxiety or depression. And he said that one of the things that they'll ask the consultant to do in their report back to them is basically like make a judgment as to whether he didn't say it in so many words, but like my mental health is bad enough that it falls underneath that remit of my insurance. So essentially, I just made a judgment in my head, which was, is going through a process over what could be the next few months that involves essentially having to prove to somebody that I feel bad enough for this to be considered um, expensable (laughs) kind of thing, um, worth the amount of stress that I'm going to feel to save myself £695. And I decided no. And so I booked a private assessment for £695 um, for next week. (laughs) For next week. And um, I'm happy with that decision because I know myself and I know that I, I... I mean, if, like, I'm fortunate enough to be able to make that decision right now, even if it puts me under some financial pressure. I'm making it. Um, because I can't... I personally... Yeah, I'm going to struggle going on for the next few months thinking about this all of the time. So anyway, that happened. And then, of course, I thought about it all day. All day. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went for a swim. Um which arguably should have done earlier, et cetera, et cetera, story of my life. I went for a swim, I thought about it the entire time that I swam, but I was swimming and I was thought about it so much that I didn't even notice that I'd swum, swum, swam, swum, 20 lengths without getting bored or wanting to stop. So it did its job. And now, because I've, I think, cause I've just like got that out of my system and done some exercise, which is a secret to life. I feel fine, I feel great. So there we go. Hello. It is. Um, I should really. Ch- I should really just check the date before I start this video, shouldn't I? <laughs> like a bird's nest. Uh, hey Google, what's the date? I just even want to know what date is. Oh, what? Tuesday? Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Um, it's Tuesday. It's eight o'clock. Uh, I think it's been a couple of days since the last update and um i'm just feeling fucking shit <laughs> fucking sh- absolute shit um for, for various reasons um you know i've got a week and two days until my assessment and i can't really bother to go into like the details of it and stuff but i'm just in this space where i'm like i'm finding my anxiety about other people's reactions like people that's close to me's reactions like it's really wearing me down like I'm so worried about how a diagnosis might impact other people while simultaneously being angry about the fact that that's even a consideration like why am I why are other people's emotions my responsibility essentially but I'm just um uh, yeah I think what I'm finding really hard about this whole process is like going through the diagnosis and like doing the self assessment for it and even and to be fair, even before of that before that, like I've been it's been a few months since I've had this in the back of my mind, so I've been like almost keeping an eye on the things and how they show up in my life that meet the criteria. Um is like you really have to like analyze a lot of stuff about yourself and <laughs> don't get me wrong <gasps> I'm a chronic self analyzer it's one of my uh biggest strengths and most painful um weaknesses but sorry my I'm like I'm absolutely I like pure headache zone just from just, uh, feeling pure stressed about it but it's um This is something else that I've noticed over the last few days. My executive function struggles, that I think that's what they are, are considerably worse when I'm stressed. What what going through this process is making me do is reflect on different things about my life and feel like a lot more insecure about them. 
which isn't that helpful. So, for example, right, I've been thinking about how the symptoms of ADHD that I think I have impact me at work. And I've always struggled with this thing of, like, I think that I'm very resilient as a person. Um, And I think that I am, right? I bounce back really quickly. I have really intense emotions, but they're very, like, fleeting. So I think that helps me with bouncing back. I've got lots of energy and enthusiasm. Like, I'm resilient. But I think at the moment I'm coming to terms with the fact that, like, I'm not good at managing stress. And I hate that because it feels like I've, I, I'm failing, right? It feels like a massive failure. But I've reflected on all of the, the jobs that I've done in my life so far. And in every moment there's been a... In every one there's been a moment of, like, burnout and breakdown. Of being unable to manage my own sense of overwhelm. And um, it's just, yeah, going through this process is like uncovering lots of stuff about yourself. And it's only a good thing that I'm I'm not going to be explaining this in a very coherent way. uh, But I can't structure my thoughts right now. I think what I'm finding difficult is part of this process and part of talking to other people about whether I think I've got it or not is like almost taking them on the mental journey that I've been going through but it ends up feeling like you're trying to justify yourself justify the reasons why you think you've got it and also justify like it's almost like proving to people that you think there's something wrong with you and it's just a really weird tension for me because me seeking a diagnosis for me personally is like the ultimate act of self-compassion because there are things about myself that I struggle with and have always struggled with, and that now I am seeing myself, or now I'm old enough to have seen myself in lots of different contexts, be that different jobs, different relationships, different locations, different friendships, like, the more context I see myself in, the more I see which problems follow me, and the more, I'll be honest, it, 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 it it's worn down my sense of, like, It's worn down my ability to like myself in in many things. And I hate saying that because there's so many things that I love about myself. But those are also things that I find really difficult to manage about myself. And so for me, pursuing this diagnosis is almost like an ultimate act of like, if I have ADHD, there's an explanation and a reason for why there are things about myself that I feel like I am hitting my head against a brick wall trying to make sense of so I see it as a good thing but this is just being it's a really weird being in this process at the moment because it's like you're trying to justify all of these things that are wrong with you almost or you know when you explain it to other people it feels like that I don't know oh my god